So, the same origin policy is at the root of browser security. And the idea is, now then the simplest thing you might imagine is that when you go to a page like yahoo.com, all the content will just be a copy of a document on yahoo.com's server and that's it. But of course, that's no good because you want to have links that go to other pages. So you're going to have ahref statements that go to other pages. But then you might want to have ads. So you've got content coming from other servers. And those ads will include pictures, okay, but they might even include scripts and such and movies and things. So really, a page contains content from many different websites or can and often does. So the browser's isolated. And the idea is um, that for cookies, see cookies, the fundamental problem with cookies is the original HTTP protocol is stateless for efficiency. Every request is a unitary item. You get a request for something like a get, you provide the get, and that's it. Then when you get another request, you don't know that it's a continuation of the previous customer at all. It could just be a different customer. The server has like amnesia. It only handles each request one by one and then forgets everything. So, um, uh, uh, Netscape invented the magic cookie. So the, web, the browser would remember data associated with the website and then replay it with every single request. So now the request would come in with this cookie in the header. So you know this request is, con is connected to that user. Um, and, that's, and so every request has to automatically include the cookie in the browser. But you don't want it to include cookies from a different site. So the browser now has this difficult job of having many different contents from different websites and keeping track of the resources and isolating them from each other. So the goal is if you have an ad for like Toyota on your page and that has um, cookies and scripts, all those will be correctly rendered on the page but they will not leak to the other page. You might be on yahoo.com and it might have an advertising for Toyota and your Browser will render that so the user can see both of those, but it'll keep them isolated so that Yahoo can't see the Toyota's cookies or run the Toyota script, and vice versa. Toyota cannot run the Yahoo cookie script or see the Yahoo cookies. That's what your browser attempts to do, and it is not extremely successful at enforcing this. But the idea is no other site can reach in to read cookies. So even if you put a Toyota ad on my page, the script in that ad is not allowed to reach in and read the other cookies on my site. And, but every site can reach out and include content from another site. That's the same origin policy. And cookies are the main data you want to protect here. They're just small strings in the browser. They could include meaningful data like a username and a password or a credit card number, but they should contain just random numbers uh, for security that mean nothing to anybody except uh, the server. And now you can log in, they can remember who you are, they can track ads, they can remember what items you put in your shopping cart, and so on. And the most important thing here is the session cookie, which is what ties all the requests you make. So when you log into Gmail, it gives you a session cookie. So when you make requests to see fail, you see your mail and not somebody else's mail. So if someone was able to predict your session cookie or steal it, then they'd be able to get in your account. So this is a high security item like a password. So the problem is the cookies are client side and the server can't trust them to any unless they are actually authenticated. Now you can have signed J uh, JSON web tokens and then they're very hard to manipulate but, but most cookies are not signed so your server must know that uh, it can't trust something like a price being in the cookie. The only thing it should trust is a sort of random number that it will recognize on the server and say, oh, that's one of mine. I know who you are. So cookie set by example.com is visible to all subdomains like cat and dog .example But if you set something on a subdomain, it's not visible to example.com or the other domains. And you can change this with parameters when you set the cookie. Now JavaScript refers to objects on the page using the document object model. This is the way it works. So you have a document and then you can have elements within a document and tree branching description of them here. So uh, I've got an example of this here, which is pretty nice. I found a website just to demonstrate this stuff. So here is um, a document, and here it's going to have a paragraph with an ID of demo. That gives it a unique identifier. 
And now we're going to click a button. And when you click a button, it's going to run this function here. That's going to find the item named demo and change it to the cookies associated with this object document, document.cookie. So there are two uses of the document object model here. This one finds the object named demo and changes what's inside there. So it's going to change this text. And this one prints out all the cookies currently available to the browser. So if you run it here, that's what happens. It changes and shows all the cookies associated to this document. And this is the main attack you're worried about, is stealing cookies. So if I can run JavaScript from somebody else in like a frame for an ad, what I'm worried about is that they will use the document object model to find the cookies they're not supposed to have and steal them. And then they can get in people's sessions by, uh, by stealing a session cookie. All right, so that's the game. Um, so if you set your cookie with the HTTP only attribute, then it will not be reachable by JavaScript which is a good idea. That will stop scripts from uh, stealing the cookie. The secure attribute is another attribute you can put on, but all that does is mean it must be transmitted over HTTPS, which is good as far as it goes, but it doesn't protect you from attacks like cross-site scripting. So Cross-origin resource sharing is a new feature in HTML5, and this will enable you to share data with trusted websites. And there's a new thing called the Web Storage API in modern browsers, which is another way to store data without using cookies. And I haven't played with that much. But anyway, the common web vulnerabilities we're going to worry about here are cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery. So cross-site scripting. Uh, the example in your book is fine. If you have a user has a color parameter they can submit with their request. And then whatever they submit here is used to specify the color. Whenever you take data that came from the user and you include it in code, you have a code injection vulnerability, likely, where the data that came from the user can be misunderstood as code. And that's what happens here. Here's the vulnerable code. It takes a the query part from the user, finds a thing named color, and then puts it in here in a line of text. And so all you have to do is send it a color that includes the right punctuation marks and a script. And then that script will run on the page. This is simple command injection and very common on the web. I've seen numbers like 60 or 80 percent of all websites have cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. Um, so to prevent this, your web framework might have a protection. Modern browsers have protections and often refuse simple cross-site scripting requests. Uh, but what you should do is avoid taking data from the user and reflecting it back in output code. Uh, make them choose from a list of known good values instead, or, or, or else you incur the burden of having to sanitize all the script tags out of it, which can be very difficult. Cross-site request forgery is similar. Um, since your web page includes content from other domains, it also can make requests to other domains, like gets. It can also make post requests to other domains. So I can put a link on my page that says click here, and when you click on that link, it goes to Facebook and makes a post on a page, or it goes to Amazon and buys a book. And if you happen to be already logged into either of those sites, your browser will send the cookies and authenticate it, and so you might have an unintended action on another site. Now, I can't see on my main page, I can't see the reply from that, uh, from a post. But you can still send the post, and that might have the desired effect, like voting in an auction or uh, buying a product. So the cure for that is to make your page, here's a voting site that is not vulnerable to this, it has a hidden value. You have some kind of form, voting for this person, choosing names and such, and then you have a hidden field with a random number in it, and the point is, you can only vote if you load the real voting page from the right domain and then vote from this form, adding this random unpredictable field. If you're on some other page and you try to send a post request to perform the vote, it won't accept it because you won't have the right anti-CSR token here. And what they recommend in the book is to derive this token from the session cookie. So only the known session can use this, and even if somebody steals this, they can't use it elsewhere which is reasonable. All right. And uh, you can have same site equals strict is an attribute to block sending cookies um, from any other domain. But again, a client-side request that might not be uh, verified. And 
Uh, there's more vulnerabilities out there. Um, HTTPS and a quality framework and don't disable the protections in the framework. Uh, I say don't allow attackers to inject inputs that go into the headers. If they can add extra text to the header, they can add extra headers, and again, they can do things like cross-site scripting. Uh, MIME content types can be specified to, to determine, tell browsers how to interpret the data you're sending. And um, open redirects are bad. If you redirect to a page that's under the attacker's control, they can use that to trick people into clicking links on your site and ending up somewhere else unintentionally. Um, iframes are risky, and you can prevent them with X-frame options, although it's a client-side control. And XML data, if you let them inject XML data, they can define XML external entities, which are, again, a cross-site scripting-like attack that affects XML. And CSS is something that can be used to track what people have been doing with the visited selector. This might show what's in their history and leak out their history. So these are other things that happen on websites. Content security policy reduces exposure to cross-site scripting, but again, relies on the browser to implement it. And uh, the referrer shows what page you came from, and that can leak information to the server. Um, so you can re prevent this with uh, no referrer and no opener that will uh, prevent JavaScript from being able to read those. This will pro hopefully prevent them being sent. And the last one is here. Um, here's some, here's the uh, summary of security response headers. Content security policy can block cross-site scripting. Referrer can control whether you allow the page to send its referrer information to the next page. Strict transport security enforces HTTPS. Content type options tells the browser to trust the content type I tell you. Otherwise, it will try and guess what content type it is and sometimes get it wrong, and that can lead to confusion and misunderstanding of a page, effectively script injection. And X frame options control whether this page can be rendered in one of these other objects, like an iframe or an object or an embed. So it might be included on some other page in a misleading way. So let's take a look at a Kahoot. See if I've got any takers. All right. Good. I thought you would come along. All right, where's the fragment? Yeah, the part after the pound. Ah, oh, good. That's interesting. There are two people. Someone else joined. Good. Oh, there we are. Good. All right. How do you prevent cross-site scripting?
Yep, refer a policy. Wait, that's not right. The content security policy is right. That's a branch cross site shipping. This, of course, controls whether the uh, URL is published to the next page in the referrer header. And how do you prevent JavaScript from stealing cookies? All right, HTTP only is what does that. Um, all right, good. All right, there's only two of you, so I know who won. I'm going to stop this recording.